YouTube. <laughs>
to where there is both an intel.guru file and an and a um, Apple Silicone guru file in those libraries and they were just uploaded in the last 24 hours this means that you can go to Bray tweaker now and only the first one i still have to save out omg and omg urban but all of these are now set so if you call up con jarpenter from mr seth norman You get the groove. And if you go to Mucky Pup from uh, Tony, this was Toby Pittman. That's right. I know two Tobys from the UK. One is Toby D, or, as Tony, not Tony. So there's Toby and Tony. Sorry, I'm. <laughs> um, Lost Souls, all of these grooves that are so fun. Now work again. So if you have Break Tweaker, this is a really cool library. It's 125, 124 grooves that use all of these drum samples from Mega Mantra Drums, a, a drum library I have yet to bring to Unify that I will once we get the next update of Unify out because the next update comes with stereo outputs amongst some other really cool things. And I wanna take advantage of all of those abilities with that. So, um, it will just have to wait a little bit longer for it, but it'll be worth the wait. It'll be it, it be the best version of that ever, of course, and stuff like that. But what's cool with this is since it's in Unify now, you can set this to Unify layer and you can call up any other groove and it loads both grooves. Maybe they shouldn't be loaded, but <laughs> they are. But it's... Break Tweaker is one of these drum things. I It's so sad it's not available anymore. But I have an alternative to show you today um, that's really interesting. Um, so we'll get to that in a minute. Also, the uh, work on Cloud City has halted. I, I have some cool things that I have done with this library. And it's it's been a bit of a struggle just because my life is kind of like a tossed salad right now. It's all in the air. Everything's in storage except for just the bare bones of what you see around me. Um, everything else is in a 10 by 20 storage facility. My house is now really present. I'm going to be showing it this weekend. I'm really looking at finding someone to rent my house. So there's all this kind of unsettled energy. And so um, it's hard to do meditative, calm, peaceful sounds when there's just a bunch of stuff going on, right? So... Thank you out there, whatever that is. So I have changed gears and I'm having a blast. And that's kind of the goal is if, if it's not something that's fun to do, <laughs> do something else. So I am in the process of, uh, we are awaiting a, appears today. He is on the waiting list for the Dimitri Resolve. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Daniela. We'll say hello to them. That's nice. Um, any link to these visualizers? Yes. Let me give you a link. This is mini meters. It's by a little company that actually they do, I believe, uh, games and stuff like that. It's called mini meters. I'll, I'll give you a tour of this. Let me get into the chat real quick. Um, very helpful to have these, as you can see. Um, there's the link in the chat. What it is, is it's a separate application that you run called Mini Meters, and you can go to the settings, and you can have it listen to any audio device input output that is coming on your computer, and then it has a spectrogram, waveform, oscilloscope, stereo meter, peak LFS, and spectrum. And then there's different settings for each one of these areas, and they can all be embedded in just one thing up above, or you can pop each one out. If I wanted to pop this waveform out, I can go like that, and now it's a separate waveform. Unfortunately, it's, it's kind of tricky to, to choose where to place it, so, um, but you can you can do all these really interesting things. So if I go over here and I go to waveform again and click, it'll just show up there again. But it's really handy because I there's a video by AU5 that he did talking about spectrometers and, and the details, and this is one that can show you really nice details to the low end. You can see my... Whoa, 
when you hold a pitch on something, if we go to like a, let's go to a pad, something like that, just to show you what kind of stuff this does. Let's go to Mega Magic Pads, volume one. And let's call up something kind of simple, like uh, something that's kind of pure. Well, let's just do deserted, which doesn't have the... F just play one note. You can see there's octaves in it. You can see the stereo imaging. It gives you a lot of visual feedback of what's going on. If you're trying to mix, it will tell you what your LUFS is and what the total mix of your output is that you're monitoring on and so forth. So. Really, really handy to have this to see what's going on. So that way you get a little bit more information on what I'm doing, you know? So uh, for $10, it's, it's kind of a, a no-brainer. <laughs> Works PC, Mac, and Linux. Let me put into the plugin shown here, we first started with mini meters. Mini meters, visual uh, feedback. And there's the link in the video description as well. So you can see it in both places. There's the alarm, and it's so funny, that alarm, if I go outside, it stops. So it's, it's really, <laughs> we have a ghost in the machine, I guess, or something like that. Um, so, I am working on a new drum groove library, and I'm having a great time using the wave drum. I've got some other things going on, and I have four grooves to show you that I've done so far. So let's open them up over here. Um, let's see, the first one I'm going to show you, let's show, uh, here's Database. Let's see here. Now I want to get, so here's another application that I have that I use called loop back. And I'm going to go over here and I'm going to say add twisted wave to my audio system. So just like that. Now when I play the audio, you know how it was blank. It wasn't registering anything. Now there it is. So there's, now, every one of these elements you hear, each one of these is about 10 different elements. They will be separate groove files as we're recycling everything. So it will all be recycled files that play inside a unified, just like Rad Bad Beats and Big Bad Beats and Noise Box um, to do all sorts of cool stuff. Space Rodeo, here's another one that's kind of fun. That's <laughs> and if I turn on the loop, I get... All right, uh, last evolution. And then cosmic dust. These aren't final mixes, some are. But watch this spectrometer waveform, it's so cool when the sub hits and stuff. I'm gonna keep having fun. Taylor's helping me chop everything up. Um, uh, uh, they'll be editable in that they're gonna be separate recycle files for all the elements and so forth. Um, I'm using um, plasmonic. I'm using my wave drum. There's real sh percussion and shakers and tambourines and stuff, all sorts of stuff. Let's see if I can load up one of the song files. Let me see if I load up. Um, let's load up, what was uh, uh, Open. What's one? I, there's one I played. I, I, we haven't chopped one of these up yet, but let's see here. Um, did I, I closed it. 
Oh, I shouldn't have done that. Let's see, go back over here and open these again. I think last evolution. Yeah, let me show you last evolution. So if I go over here to logic and I say, hey, can you just load up? My, my audio will go away for a second, but hang on. Uh, last evolution. Uh, don't close. Uh, Okay, I should be back. Uh, so here is the logic file for last evolution. Let me show you what's going on here. There's, um, I started this off with a groove from Microtonic. If you're not familiar with Microtonic, this is one of my favorite synth drum machines. And I did the cool thing. If you go here, you can browse presets to browse the save files on your net on the computer. But also you have Browse Patronarium, which will open a website on the World Wide Web that is Microtonic as a website. And you click here. And if I say download, it will let me save this file to my desktop. So now I can go over to here and I can go to my little hamburger and say open preset. And on my desktop, say load, and there it is. From the internet, I now have a groove on the computer. So using that, I need to go back to logic and um, let's say revert. So I get back to the saved. Um, I'm gonna, my voice is going to go away for a second, but I'll be right back because I messed up the groove by doing this, of course. Because I messed up the groove by doing All right, we're back. So this groove, when I play it, it has some interesting things going on. First of all, this is the sounds from Microtonic that I pulled out and I made them um, I took the groove, but then I turned off the sequence because I wanted to just play my own sound. So I have, um, where's, so, oh wait, I think the groove is now playing for some reason. So go over here and say stop, so it doesn't play it. Um, there's a really cool noise. Where is it? There it is. It was a clap, but I slowed it down to make it become like an ocean wave. So that's number four. And if you bring the attack and decay of the, the, it's basically there's an oscillator and noise. So think of this, in a minute we're gonna look at Battalion and it works where it has a synth engine and sample. This, there's no sample ability whatsoever. It's all synthesis. So it has a noise component and it has an oscillator component. Um, the, the mix is 100% noise. If I bring the mix over to oscillator, then it plays whatever is here, right? But I have it set to noise, so it's just playing the noise, which is that. So the three parts played here, the bass, the hi-hat, and a noise. On two is Brake Tweaker, doing a whole cool groove. And I have it set to separate outputs so that I have object delay on the snare. I 
I have Boom, which is a plug-in alliance plug that just adds a huge sub thud to kicks. Here's without it. Now here's with it. Hear that added weight in the subs? It's awesome. And you can choose what frequency you want it to boom and stuff like that. And then I had some audio that I had some fun with. So to start with, this is a rain stick. But I'm running it through Infiltrator. And I'm running it through one of the Verve plugin alliance. Or no, this is Universal Audio Effects. Without these, it's just a recording of a rain stick that I did. But by adding, let's see, do I have a rain stick? Yeah. Here's my rain stick. So, makes cool shakers and all, these are, love this thing. So you put that with the other elements. Now, over here, it's a tambourine, but I have vast, <laughs> endless uh, EQ and then Gatekeeper, which is another one of these plugins that's just super useful for creative sound design. If I turned all these off, it would just be a tambourine. There's vast. Vast, if you don't know, is the new Heaviosity Convolution Reverb. It has some cool convolutions that are more than just reverb that do cool textures and stuff like that. So it's, And then Endless is the free multi-effect plugin for reverb. Incredible. It, it goes into shimmer verb territory, all sorts of really cool reverb types of sounds, and it's free. And it's in the video descriptions for you to check out and download if you want it. Then single EQ, I'm using this, I think, as a low cut. Just to get rid of some of the high end of the... the, the uh, and then I was like, well, I need a little bit more personality. So Gatekeeper gives it that reverb with something after it makes it have a cool pulse. Okay. And then the next thing... Sounds rather cool, isn't it? Where is it? Uh, hold on, I'm gonna have to. I think he's over. One second, let me go get my. This, this is pretty funny. Oh, there you are. <laughs> he was hiding. It's a big, big glass Ikea flower vase. And it has this beautiful tone, which I sampled. Right? Uh, next up is Plasmonic. Plasmonic, I talked to Brian and I said, hey, can I use Plasmonic to make some cool things for a drum library? He's like, it'd be an honor. I'd love it. So it's doing this radiator kind of sound I made. And it has just on the edge of feedback. Sometimes the feedback gets too much, so I actually had to I had to record a few times to get to where it would give me a take that didn't completely blow up. And then I recorded another 
with a uh, gatekeeper. Oh, this is sculpture. I'm sorry, sculpture was used for this. Isn't that cool? And then I did another sound with, with sculpture, which is a plugin from inside a Logic Pro that does physical modeling and you can change the the with for nylon or wood or glass for the textures. There's no plugin like this. It's so cool. And again, gatekeeper to give it some rhythmic variations. Just a little. So if I combine the two sculptures and let's say the glass vase. <laughs> So you'll be able to have these elements to play with. Isn't that cool? Really, really fun. So. It's kind of like I'm doing an album project. But instead of making a record that 30 people hear, I'm going to make it as a library you all can play with because I'd rather do that, helps me pay my bills. And it's really satisfying to create all these elements and then get them out there and hear what people do with them. So I'm, I'm doing an album project, it's the way I kind of think about it. And so these are the songs for my album, but instead of taking them all the way out to being a full song, I put them into a way that you guys get to like pick apart, use different elements of, or use all of it or whatever you want. Then it ends up being on openings of songs and. Love it, love it, love it, love it, fun stuff. So, love it, love it, love it, love it, fun stuff. That, that is what's going on, let's see, over here. So, <laughs> very fun stuff. So, I don't know when it will be done. I might, it might not be till sometime in May when I get done moving. It depends, there, there's people looking at my house that are interested and so I don't know when I'm going to be told I need to be out of this house and need to tear this all down, I have my plans in place. What I'm going to do is just a matter of when. So, um, okay, I, I need you guys, uh, Wilfred, Daniela, everybody, can we stop the chat? I mean, I, I really am happy to meet that Stefan is here. That's great. Uh, but let's, let's, you guys talk later and because that it kind of disrupts the live stream if this whole separate conversation is going on okay love you guys um yeah so yeah so just just on the side chat if you want to talk about plasmatic and stuff that's good so is it okay uh is okay anyway so i have so, so that's what i'm working on um i'm calling it future grooves for now I don't know what the final name will be. That might be the final name. Um, how do you tie MIDI meters into your DAW output? Well, it's a separate application. And um, when you run the settings, you can choose right here what audio device it should listen to. And also, um, if you have, you can install a plugin, MIDI meters server that you can call up. And by doing that, that is another way to route audio into uh, this mini meters application because now that should show up here as the mini meters plugin. And if I select that, now it's no, no longer listen to me. It'll just, just listen to Unify when I use it, right? So, um, but I have it set to, uh, where's my uh, loopback audio? So that way it listens to everybody. But they have a separate plugin that you can use as well to, to get it working. So there's two plugins to show you um, that have come out this week. There's one called Myth from Dawson. Is that in my headphones? Let me see something real quick. I'm trying to see. Quit that. we we'll have to see if maybe the audio, I have one earbud out, so when it starts, we'll see if I hear it. Anyway, let me get to the website for Dawson real quick. This is from Traction 
They are distributing this. It's actually made by um, a Peter a gentleman by the name of Peter. Uh, it's an interesting instrument. Um, it was built to create joy and inspiration we feel when playing the hardware. It's I can't tell where that sound is coming from. I, I'm sorry for the buzz. I don't know where it is that is that pitch, but we'll just live with it. Uh, instead of programming sounds you create by exploring and tweaking, the sound is rich and organic, and the entire system acts like one organism. I didn't find that to be the case, but we'll take a look at it, and you, you, you can decide for yourself. Uh, it's got a really interesting interface. It's got some really cool... J60 choruses and cool EQ and grain and all sorts of cool plugins. It does have randomizing and so forth. Uh, the programmers that worked on it love it. Uh, it comes with more than 700 presets made by seven or 10 sound designers. Here's Peter. Peter is the genius. I mean, he. Yeah, I think it's only on my system. Interesting. I don't know what would be doing that because. Um, let me see. Let me turn this down. I don't think it's the wave drum. Hmm. Interesting. Well, I'm one that gets bugged by tones when they come out of nowhere because I'm... <laughs> it's like, what synth is making that? But I'll ignore it. Um, let's do this. I want to actually do something experimental. So I'm going to call up an instrument inside of logic pro real quick let's make an audio file that we're going to then feed into myth um and i'm going to go over here to korg to the original wave station and we're going to call up something that's got some cool wave sequencing and motion to it like entropy or let's see what's another one that my friends back in the day created that i love so much Let's play with this. Because that has a lot of harmonic motion. So I'm going to just play a note. Let's see here. Go to Logic. And... Okay. And then bounce this out. Uh, export audio. Wave station. Let's see. Export to the desktop. Export. There we go. Here it is. And we'll call it <laughs> Wave Station Motion. Okay. Let me edit this really quick so we don't have a click at the beginning. Just fade in just a little bit. And I'm going to normalize it to, oh, let's say minus three stereo. Save. Okay, so we have a nice harmonic motion sound to play with. And let's mute this over here. And we'll get show MIDI up so you have a keyboard to see here for what I'm playing. And mute that so we don't hear sound. Okay, myth. Hello, Myth. How are you doing? Let's see. Are you are you not playing yet? I might have to do a quit. And let's run Unify one more time. There we go. And let's get this set right here. Get all this information around us. Wow, there's more information than ever. It's, it's kind of like being <laughs> in um, some sort of like a... Oh, you know, when you see all the numbers around for business reports for stocks and all that kind of stuff, it's like the stock readout. Let's go light. Let's go myth. And it kind of has from this default patch a wave station esque vibe. It's very interesting. You have basically what they call two irises, and then you have controls down here for controlling parameters, and it does a type of a, 
nonlinear additive. It's adding for, for if you let's see if this this transfer if you read the bottom it says transformer tra modifies the timber to to like in a brass instrument. It's interesting. Now, the, uh, the, there's been a lot of work on this, obviously, getting graphics that are doing this sort of interactivity. You've got the ability to control where it plays. You have over here your modulation list. And then down here is where you set up your various modulations for the amp, oscillator one, oscillator two, filter, effect one, and effect two, which can be, as you see, a chain of a whole bunch of different effects. Um, where it kind of falls a little short is that, and, and it's a similar problem that faces um, Battalion, and that's just organizing the voicing and making sure you have compelling voicing that really shows everything the instrument can do. Um, where they drop the ball here is that if, if you go to the browser here, it's all organized. There's four thieves, Alessandro Cardinal, there's Aerovane, there's Cool, there's Data Broth, who we will see also in um, on Battalion in a little bit. There's Dawson himself that's made some patches all through here. There's 10 different people's interpretation of the factory voicing, and they're not put together. Um, it's it's like watching and working on 10 different project files that somebody else created for you. You call up the patches and there's like no quality control. So you have these sounds by Exposita. And let's let's go to Dawson since he's the gentleman behind making this, you know, and it kind of has none of it has like this is a string, this is the bass, this is a, you don't know how to use these sounds, so you're calling them up and exploring, which is great. Um, that's kind of where I would categorize this. This is for the sonic explorer type of a person. You know, there's not a lot of text for information on what to do to a lot of these. Just kind of like, like if someone was doing an album, you make a whole bunch of cool stuff like this for your album. Um, but for voicing, uh, you got to approach it a little differently, in my opinion. I've, I've voiced many, many, many synthesizers. Um, I, you know, there's names, authors, there's tags, so you can... Like, I don't know, bass. And here you have. So you can find these, but you got to type in the names, the bright, you know, I mean, here you go, you got drum. You do have some categories to choose from this way. Let's see, take bass out of this. Let's get keys. There's two keys patches. And neither one of them are keys. It's like, where's the cool myth version of an electric piano? Where's the cool myth string orchestra? Where's the cool myth lead sounds doing all this cool motion? That you have to put as much effort into organizing and categorizing and managing your voicing as you do making these instruments. These guys put all this effort into making this really cool instrument and the most important thing in bar none, I have made Korg synthesizers help sell millions of copies when the actual engine was really bad because we'd made really cool patches that people could sit down and play. And here,
they kind of went the opposite. It's a really, really, really cool engine, but none of the patches get you there. You have to do it yourself. So it's really unfortunate that as more effort wasn't put into making sounds when you go to the string. I mean... There's no string orchestras. Right? It's all, the, they're all the same category of exploratory, interesting sounds that are uncategorizable, even though they're called strings. So, if you want to explore, if you want to make your own patches, here, let's hit a knit. Let's take this uh, wave sequence motion patch. Because the cool thing with this is you can drag a sample in and then use this to sort of play through the but in the end it's really kind of misleading that in their advertising for this they even say such things as you know um Let's see, right here, like, um, the inherent variations uh, in classical synthesis oscillators are mostly static, and you add filters or modulators. Uh, Myth offers a paradigm shift. Drag and drop audio, and it will be resynthesized as an iris, right? The inherent variations and richness of the sample can now be exploited with the transformer dials. Of course, you can also add classic LFOs, envelopes, or filters as much as you want, just you will rarely feel the need. So that says to me, that I should drag this sound over here, I should play a note, and it does something amazing to it. It's reinterpreted it. And what I have to do now is go over here to the OS. Um, let's see, we wanna add an LFO. So we say we wanna add an LFO. And then I select this and I bring this up. And then you can click the LFO if you want, and you can say, no, I want it to start at the bottom. And I want it instead to go from here through the whole travel path, so it just keeps cycling. Right? I don't know, here, as a comparison, let's mute that, let's say new layer. Because I, I really wanted to, like, really get into this. I was like, oh, yeah, that sounds really cool. Call up Novum, which is another synth that Dawson has created. And with this one here, you can play all these really cool samples. And it's doing all this motion and stuff. If I sit and knit, it won't give me an init. All right, well, let's call up Novum again. So it's a knit. <laughs> if I drag this sample over here, I immediately get something really cool and it's moving. And then I can play with the parameters for size and density and position and I can get all sorts of really cool stuff to happen. Right? So they make it sound like Myth is doing what we've expected from Novum. And unfortunately, it doesn't. It, it's more, they, they call it, if you go down to the end of the, the, the wording of here, um, they call this a um, advanced organic resynthesis based on machine learning. Uh, it's basically, to be honest, it's more like a wave table of the sample turned into an iris that you can then modulate position of. Wait. This is that same sample in Myth.
versus... Oh wait, here's... Here it is inside of Novum. I'd much rather play with Novum. All these abilities here... Get Jilt and Skew and Time Jilt so it's all over the place. That's super cool, man. I, I couldn't get anything even close to that out of Myth from just starting with a, my own sample. Same sample. And you can bring this up and you can bring up other waveforms and There's things you can do to the sound, but it, I, I don't know. So if you are into exploring sounds and if these types of sounds, it's not bad. I'm, I'm not saying it's bad. I'm just saying it's a little bit confusing and not really presented and thought through how they're doing the voicing and presenting the instrument. Uh, Data brought this some cool... <laughs> Modulation will changes the color of the iris as it's changing parameters. It's just all kind of floaty, slow pads. And, you know, if I saw this before it came out, I'd say, stop. <laughs> Don't let this out yet. You need to redo the voicing. It all needs to be one cohesive data bank. And you need to have bases and have 20 bases that are myth, mind-blowing, cool myth bases. You need to have leads, keyboards, synths, strings, special effects, bases, really cool motion stuff have the basic categories that any successful synth is going to have if you look at anything else that has done well it is really strong in the voicing as a big part of its success so myth is a bit of a could have been and if you have the time and you want to explore it unfortunately it's not an inexpensive invitation to explore it's on sale at 125 retails I think 169 let me see let's see if I come over here in my myth so I really thank traction for sending me a NFR version to try out 179 is the retail 125 um, they're planning this to be like some sort of a very big deal for them but I don't think that they if you're gonna make something a big deal you kind of have to cover your bases and one of the most important bases of any product you create is the voicing <laughs> right so it, it myth <laughs> unbarred <laughs> nice one nice one man yes nice it is a bit of a hit and myth um but the factory presets um you need to invest time to be able to use it of course i mean i've spent uh, probably five hours working with it and I, I didn't come up with much that I even wanted to save so I've talked with some of the programmers that worked on it and I'm not going to share details of what they said but it was a lot of work to get what it does so they should have they should have um, spent a little bit more time on doing the stuff the most important thing on any product that a musician is going to play are the patches I'm sorry no matter what cool the technology is, if you don't have patches that back it up, it's it's going to be a hard sell. And so this is going to, I think this is going to be a hard sell for these guys because I can go to all sorts of third-party banks for all sorts of synthesizers where there's patches like this. And that's not what you can put in a $179 synthesizer. So... I wish them luck. 
it sounds beautiful when it's doing cool things but it's it's very it's hit and miss so uh, anyway, so Myth, the video description, there's a link in the video description. It's available at the Traction website. Uh, myth, well, Myth is kind of like mythological, like, you know, this, the mythology between like Greek gods and like there's something uh, epic involved in this. There used to be a video game from Bungie before they started. Um, uh, what is it? Uh, that beep is going to drive me nuts. Maybe you guys don't even hear it. Maybe it's just in my ears. <laughs> um, when they started their uh, marathon, um, which actually, they, what they changed, it used to be marathon, then they changed the name of uh, Bungie Software. Anyway, they made a game called Myth. That was really fun, where it was like team battles on the landscape, and it was super cool. Anyway, Myth is a synth. Um, if you want to explore it, download the demo, try it out. Oh, you hear it too. Okay. Okay. So it's not just me. Okay. So I don't know what it is and I apologize for it. Uh, the other new plugin that I want to show you is a crazy cool plugin that, that I hope gets more attention than it's aimed at getting, it seems. Uh, this is Battalion. Um, if you're familiar, let me get my little optimizer light to protect the outputs because this will get very loud at times. <laughs> um, if you're familiar with unfiltered audio, they've done Lion. They have a number of really cool, they have some uh, unfiltered audio. Um, Biome, build your own modular is really, really cool. Uh, Lion is a synth that I did the voicing with them on. Um, filtered. And Lion has just some really cool capabilities. It was all cable based for doing the, it was, it's a lot of work to program this. But here, I got your snappy bass in the first three patches. Synth brass. So if you go through the voicing of a synth I've been involved with, it's going to have the basses covered. Cool pads, cool basses, cool leads. You have to have those key sounds. Now, this similar problem has happened with Battalion in that it has an unbelievable wealth of samples. The, the layout is this, basically. You have eight different sound sources that can be eight different drum sounds. And each one of the drum sounds has a synth component, which could be, let's see, the kick. Am I playing the right one? And here's the synth decay. Right? Then you have hi-hat. Their presets are, are a little, they could be so much better than default presets. Snare. Claps. You have a stereo button that you can turn on, so it makes everything just super cool stereo or mono. So you have all these different, the, the, the number of modals, look at all of these. This is kind of like if you're familiar with Electron, Electron, they've got Cycles, which has like a handful of different algorithms for things. This, there's like voice. All sorts of cool things. Right? All sorts of very things that have five different parameters. Then you have a sampler. And inside of the sampler, the factory samples, ignore the plugin group. I'm, I'm making a power pack for this because 
Look at all these kick samples, all these hi-hats, all these cymbals, all these claps. Each of the artists that worked on this brought in their own sets of samples and weird things and stuff like that to play with. And for all of that incredible source, the only dude that really did really cool stuff is Data Broth. But again, it's all in these separate folders for each person instead of being amalgamated into one thing. And a lot of the grooves just are ambient works like this is the first patch you call up when you call up that's the second patch the, third, the first patches you're gonna go through is ambient works is kind of weird synthy Get something kind of cool. It has a sequencer, which I love this interface. You have the timing, and then you have a window for the value for velocity, shift, pitch, ratchet, envelope, pan variation knob which is really cool probability so we can have it play not all the time sins of effects and macro 2 which means on the voice page if you click instead of the cable connecting you click above these knobs that are uh, assignable modulation sources and then you just click and drag and you're changing that so that now this changes the decay of the sound and that can now be a parameter in the sequencer so there's all this mind-blowing power there's built-in delay that has all this cool shatter delay there's all these cool reverbs there's have all you can feed the delay into the reverb all this crazy stuff and the very first patches are these like weird finally if you like make it through all these guys you finally get to data broth where he does some really cool. And all of a sudden it was like, oh, that's kind of cool. One guy got it, but he's not until the fourth folder in the list of factory presets before you find anything even remotely close to this. So. You have to do your voicing right. You're killing your instruments if you don't do your voicing right. Uh, sorry, it's this instrument, most people aren't gonna get past the first three folders and go, uh, weird. Then it gets even cooler. Let me show you what's even cooler on this. Let's take this patch. There's a performance page which has all of these knobs to change sounds this is where you play this live and you're doing real weird radical stuff right so if i play there's a randomize i'm gonna set randomize at like a high percent but i'm set to depth at zero and i i don't know why this is bipolar it's stupid it should be at zero and if you double click it should go to zero you double click it goes to 100 i want it to go to a, to zero so then i can hit randomize i move this hit reset it goes back to the save preset so you can freak stuff out like you wouldn't believe play pitch and go back but this needs to go to zero right away when I Super cool stuff, but 
the, the source, there's just all over the place to find grooves. Hit randomize. So for live breakdowns of grooves and stuff, this has the coolest interface I've ever played with. spent four hours and I made five patterns so far so here's um there's nothing anywhere close to this in the factory voicing by anybody Here, let's go to 75 beats per minute. Doo -doo. So I can play a little bit of this groove. Oh, did I, wait, oh, uh-oh, I lost it. <laughs> Revert to untitled. Here's 77. Thank God, Unify remembers, and anytime you change patches, it saves the state so you can get it back. Just right click on revert. So here's cruising, kind of fed up. Let's see, we gotta get to 90 beats per minute for this one. I want uh, 90. There's nothing in the entire voicing, and I, I, I mean, I'm not the only one that can make grooves like this. I know it. I know it. I know it. It took me like three hours to five. To take this. They're so fun to play with, man. Let's see, murky, murky muck. I mean, it's so fun to play with. Let's see, did I make some other ones? Uh, uh, kind of fed up, cruising, ice, and then pop trash. You know, there, if you're gonna do a drum machine, there has to be drum machine beats. You have to have eight beat, rock, 16 beat, shuffle, samba, polka, all that stuff. None of that exists. So I don't know why they would release this without covering their bases. They didn't consult with me, I'll tell you that, because I would have written a big all caps letter. What the hell are you doing? <laughs> wait, wait, do some cool grooves, man. Make it really cool, make it really compelling, especially with so many samples and so many cool synth engines. Let's make a patch from scratch. Let me show you how fun it is to work with because this thing is super cool. So if we say reset to defaults, um, let's go to the kick, and because I don't want to spend all the time mucking around with their um, engine, because their engine's kick just, it's weak until you set it up. Let's go, let's load samples, and we'll go to the factory. I've put my own 
samples. I'm going to organize this. It's not organized yet. I just put a whole bunch of my drum libraries in here to work with. So let's say we call up a kick and go over here to the sequence. And let's do a four on the floor groove to start with. So let's just say four on the floor, play a note. Right? Now let's add a couple beats. And let's go to probability and let's make it really strong on the negative that these three won't play. Well, actually we want this one to be fairly, that's gonna play. And I have this about halfway. Okay, and let's have ratchets on a couple of these just for fun. So it's got some like doubling and weird stuff because we want to get into the weird kind of. And let's say for hi hats, let's go. And let's go play the parameters for this. Let's do this. If we go over here to the sequencer, to envelope, we can just bucky buck around, make a cool pattern. Let's go to snare. And let's go to samples, factory samples. Let's go to their snares. And let's add a tambourine, just because we need something fun to play with for a high-end energy. So go sequencer, part four, boom. <laughs> it's such a clap. I want it to be a different thing. Let's go over here and choose like, um, let's use kombucha. Now, another thing that's really cool is this variation. If you bring this up, it randomizes all the parameters automatically. Panning, all these synth parameters. And if you right click on any one, you lock it. So it, I don't want to change sample start. So I'm going to lock that. I, I don't want pan to change. So now I, let's bring this down and bring it resonance. I mean, it's taken me 15, like two minutes. And I want the snare to have reverb. So you come down here. Let's have the snare be shorter. Play sample rate and tilt it. I mean, it's not hard to program. So why they have all these factory patches that are just like absolutely weird. This is a factory patch. The depth thickens. The other drawback to this is it's only one major sequence. There isn't a, like a variation sequence, not even an A and a B to go between or anything like that. It's just the one. That's where the performance comes in really handy to be able to change the variability and stuff like that. Uh, so it's a really, really cool drum machine. Again, hampered by sub professional level voicing. There's some really cool, unique stuff in there, but not enough and not enough of the bases covered that you can, you need some cool things that are just basic to start with that you can then like do all the tweaking of the parameters and stuff like that. So again, voicing is so important to these machines. If you're gonna put all this money and birth this instrument that took all this time, if you don't put some energy behind the voicing, don't waste your time, really. It's just really unfortunate to have something that very few people program drum rhythms. Some people like it. Most people just want to call up drum rhythms because they haven't studied, they haven't played drums. They don't understand the basics even, let alone all the more advanced things. So um, 
If you own Lion, you can get... Oh, okay, cool. So, um... So, if you want to join the Plugin Alliance subscription plan, this is in the plan included for free. Yes, there is a library. I am already under works on it. These grooves are for... Yeah. The other thing that's a little interesting is this maximize button is dangerous. <laughs> like, without maximize, the drums sound like this. And as I bring up maximize, even a little bit, and it started to color it. That's 56%. <laughs> At 100%, the samples are... It's so intense, you don't even hear the snare. The snare's gone. So I wish I had different settings for maximize. They need a little pull down right here with like, you know, absolute destruction or, you know, break tweaker has a really, really cool as a comparison. Let's call up a break tweaker patch since I spent all that time saving these guys. Let's say something like um, dirty vibe. Uh, no, it's too busy. Let's go to like, uh, goes around. This is a cool just dance groove. I, I listened to uh, goes around from T Justin Timberlake and right. There's zero of the intensity. They have a similar thing, but when you put it hundred percent, the snares are grabbed and have energy. This is the kind of intensity I wish Battalion did. From this. It hypes up everything, but it doesn't destroy it. <laughs> um, battalion, it just, it's, it's a battalion, man. You've got five million nuclear arms. So when you bring it up to max, it's completely obliterated the landscape. It's, it's a, it's a war zone out there, right? So it's a whole different vibe. And so unfortunately that makes you have to change the levels of your mix of your drums in order to get the maximized to make a cool effect. And that's that's too bad. I, I some Again, somebody should have talked to him and said, hey, maximize isn't working right. This is too drastic. I, I want something that enhances the groove and doesn't destroy it. And then if you want to make other parameters under this little window that says, you know, you know, <laughs> just nice grazing of the land with, land with bombs, and then you have nuclear. This is the nuclear option. It, it destroys it. Okay, so that's where we are at. There's... Those two plugins, they're really cool plugins. They both are going to require uh, some involvement from you to get the most out of them. So it's, it's um, I don't know. I just, I've done voicing on so many synthesizers that it's just basic knowledge. In fact, I'm going to take the last few minutes of this live stream. A sad thing is, has brought, been brought to my attention this week. And one of the voicing members of Korg's voicing team a gentleman from the name of Michael Geisel. Um, here's our meetings in Japan. This is during, oh, open and preview, please, so it opens it big. This is in Japan during the voicing for the Trinity. You can tell from the little floppy disk. This is a, one of the early prototypes. You see this sheet of paper. So Michael Geisel is right here. We, we lost him this week. He passed away from cancer. It's, it's, Shocking. He got like less than a month, like something like a month ago, they told him he had cancer and it took him super rapidly. So it's, we're all in shock. But we as a team would sit in these meetings in Japan. We came from Germany, from Italy, Steve McNally from Canada. This is Tony Diaz from, the, from London. And this sheet of paper has all of our patches put together and we would play through all of the string patches and we would vote on each of the string patches and then we would take the top votes and those would be the ones that would be put into the voicing and then we would negotiate if there were patches missing, you know. 
Some band released a really cool track and this sound was in it and we have to have it in this machine because it's gonna be a big deal coming that to do these types of sounds. So we would have these voicing meetings and that's how we did the voicing for all the Korg products from the M1, T-Series, Triton, Trinity, O1W, Karma, WaveStation, WaveStation SR, WaveStation AD, all the M3, M5s, the Kronos, Kronos 2, uh, even WaveState Native. We, we Now, since the internet has shown up, we do things where we use spreadsheets and we vote from our own houses, but it's still a lot of opinions from a lot of people on what patches deserve to be put into the voicing. It's not just hey, send me your patches and you just put this folder into the folder bank of the library and, and ship it out. I mean, more than half of the patches in both Battalion and Myth, I would delete on first play. I just, no, this this doesn't work. This Nobody's going to be like, any patch should be either musical or sell the machine in something unique. And if it doesn't, it should not be in your machine, period. How did the name O&W come about? O&W was a joke from Chairman Kato, because <laughs> the M1 came out and it became the best-selling synthesizer in history. Um, it sold more copies than the M1 for, than the uh, DX7 for a number of years. The Korg factory was working 24 hours a day. And we were trying to think what the follow-up to the M1 should be. And, you know, M1, M2, E3, so it's like, how about M10? And then Kato came in and took the paper and flipped it upside down. O1W, ah, that's that's new name. So it's M10 upside down. <laughs> uh, anyway, I want to just say that Michael was a just a wonderful, gifted friend, an artist. We worked and collaborated. Um, wonderful spirit. We used to meet each morning at this little. A tea shop and have cheese it's called chizu tosto and hato lemon tea <laughs> and they had a little salad that had a big dollop of wasabi pure wasabi japanese wasabi is not to be compared with anything else and he would put that on a spoon and eat it raw and be, Ooh, i love this so much <laughs> um but yes we lost him this week and he's a dear friend and i'm very sad so this is like the, I think this is like the T series. Oh no, this is maybe the Oasis. I can't remember what voicing this. I'd have to look at my dates and stuff like that. But we worked as a team on all sorts of synthesizers and it takes a collaborative effort to do the voicing of a machine right. And you have to have that same approach and mentality and concept when you're doing it in software. I, I If you don't, it's not gonna stand up to the, I mean, Myth is out for the rest of its life. It's got years of existing and it didn't get put off on a stellar footing with killer voicing that makes you go, oh my God, I have to have Myth. I've never heard a string sound like that. I've never heard a bass sound like that. There's nothing like that in there to work with. Unfiltered Audio, they're saved a little bit because it's got really cool capabilities and enough stuff. Go to the Data Broth folder first. He did some just really, really, really cool ambivalence is really cool for the. Let's see, what is the voicing? Let's say 100 beats per minute, 110. No, so there's one of these that he did this really cool. It's not ambivalence, it's, um, amp, I, I think it's atmospherics. No? Somebody did one on ambient thing that's really cool. No? There's one that has some really cool bells and stuff in it that was really fun. Um.
Mysterion. So there's there's fun 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 stuff in here. But it's not well-rounded voicing. There's So I'll be making a whole bunch of <laughs> So yeah, I'll make a power pack for this because it deserves more cool patches than what it, it's kind of like, I, we did the same thing with Break Tweaker. There's the three libraries for Break Tweaker that, again, it came out with like uh, lo lots of weird stuff. And so we made libraries for that, that take it in all sorts of really cool places. So we'll do the same thing. That's why we are here. We love to fill out the blanks in some of these plugins when we can. Well, anyway, thank you for joining us. Is Data Broth here? Hey, dude, really good work on that. Great work on um, Data Broth has voicing inside both Battalion and Myth. Some of the more interesting patches in both of these. Um, but dude, they didn't do enough. <laughs> they need other people to work on this to get all sorts of stuff um, beyond. And I, I don't know if you've seen our whole talk here, but this is the worst way to do voicing to have your factory patches be in separate folders of different artists. You can't do that, man. It needs to be one bank showing a whole plethora of different patches from a whole bunch of different people that are really cool and basics and all the basics are missing. There's nothing straight ahead. It's still a really cool machine. The ability to take this mess up of randomizing and And then go back. It's cool. I wish I had more sequencer patterns. One pattern is not enough. Uh, but the engine itself is just like pretty serious. So yeah, you're welcome, dude. You're welcome. Good work. Good work. Well, let's do our shout outs. I'm going to... Good. I, I got to go put for rent signs up on my house and so forth. So um, anyway, there we go. We did a good job, I think. Uh, now I write O3RW and turn it around. No, O1W upside down is M10. After that, once it became O1W, then it became the O3W rack and O3 rack and stuff like that. So yes. Um, Why you never explain something in your live streams. Uh, Daniela, he doesn't have to answer that. That's, you know. <laughs> Go offline to talk about that stuff if you want. Anyway, let's do our shout outs from wherever you are. Shout out from perfect weather in Portland, Oregon. And thank you for joining. It's great to see some new faces and names and stuff like that. Yeah, and let's see what else is going on here. Shout outs. Germany, Tucson. Okay, Daniela, okay, good. Uh, shout out from Colorado. Domo arigato, Kasaka-san. Kasaka-san is here every week. I appreciate that, because... Hey Siri, what time is it in Tokyo right now? It's 5.30 a.m. in Tokyo, Japan. The dude gets up at four in the morning to watch this live stream. That's amazing. Kasaka-san, thank you. That's, I, I would not do that. <laughs> I'd watch it on repeat, something like that. Anyway, you guys are all great. Thank you for your support. Again, there's some libraries for sale at the website. I did a video recently on Rob Poppin's really cool little um, bit 2.0 synthesizer. It's on sale. Watch that video if you want to see about a cool analog retro synth with some cool extra capabilities. It's really, really fun. And I think there'll be one more live stream and then I will be moving. So I think I'll be here next week. And then we will be closing lights until I get to Idaho. All right. Well, good to see you all. Blessings. Good to see you, Simeon, everybody else. Thanks for joining us. It's a pleasure. I love to do this every week, show you guys what's going on new and keep everybody honest. And uh, voicing, it's all about voicing. I'm gonna.
pound my fist on that till the day I don't breathe anymore. Because you got to do good voicing. If you do good voicing, you feel it, it, it will sell itself. People download the demo. They play. People buy. People download the demo of Unify. They play the patches. And most of them turn around and buy Unify. Because we make good patches that are usable and do all sorts of cool things. And you got to do that with your instruments. Um, you put so much work into making an instrument. So it's like I almost am crying because the voicing isn't as strong as it should be for either Battalion or for Myth. Neither, neither one of them, they, they got some great ideas in there, but you need, you need a whole bunch of great ideas and you need really straight ahead usable stuff. And neither one of them hit those watermarks for me. So voicing, it's all about voicing. If you don't voice the instrument, then the people that don't know how to program, that don't know how to make drum programs, they, they're just going to go, what do I do with this weird, you know, chord, synthy, blippy, I mean, what do I do with that? What song do I have that I could use that on, you know? So, yeah. Anyway, we'll see you soon. Thanks for joining. Keep creative. Have a great week. And see you later. Bye. Bye. Bye.